The flash film or the nighttime paparazzi look is such an iconic style and a look I've always been inspired to do in my portraits. There's something about that harsh light hitting your subject, making everything around your model dark and almost non-existent. There's no distractions, no eyesores. You look at a photo like this and all your attention is drawn directly to the subject. Like they're the center of attention. There's just no better shot. So right now I'm heading to an event put on by Canon and Socality and I thought what better way to show you how to do this effect at an event full of people where if not using a flash, it would be hard to seclude your subject and not get anybody in the shot. We are facing two challenges though. It's extremely bright outside, which means the studio is just gonna be full of light because it is the middle of the day. And I won't be able to stop down using my shutter speed because I am using a Canon flash on my Sony and I don't get all the features like high speed sync. These events are so much fun. I love meeting other creatives in my city, but they can get pretty crowded and loud, making it really hard to film this video with audio, but also to get a nice portrait without having anyone in the background. I love shooting with a harsh flash in these situations because it gets you a pretty sweet look, but also makes your subject stand out in a busy environment. I got Paige to model for me because she was wearing this leather jacket and there's something about harsh flash and leather that looks great. To achieve the flash film look, there's two things you need to do. Shoot with a flash and finalize the look in post-production. Any on-camera flash will work, but if you wanna get the same one that I'm using, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. I'll also leave a link to the preset I used to edit these photos. When it comes to shooting with a flash or on camera flash, I think it's something a lot of beginners shy away from because it's even more settings you have to worry about adjusting on top of your camera settings. But I'll tell you right now, there's nothing to be scared of. Flash is actually really easy to use. Now, despite flash being easy to use, these circumstances made it a little tricky for me. And that's because the flash I was using on my Sony a7 IV was made for a Canon body. When using a flash that's not made for your camera, two things will happen. The flash either doesn't work at all, or it'll work but only in manual mode, and you'll lose functions like TTL, high speed sync, and more. Now because I didn't have high speed sync available to me, shooting any higher than one over two hundredths of a second gives me these lines cutting through my shots, ruining my photos. So I had to shoot at one over two hundredths or below. I also didn't have TTL, so it was almost like I was shooting blind. My screen was black and I wasn't able to tell if my subject had her eyes open, if she was in focus, until after the photo was taken. I'm not gonna talk about the settings I used for my flash because that will change in every single scenario. What I will say is that you should Take a photo at every single exposure setting of your flash until your subject's face is properly exposed. If it's overexposed, then just drop down the intensity of your flash. If it's too underexposed, then increase that intensity. I can't be the only one who does this, but before I head to a shoot, I put this vision or idea in my head of what I want the photos to look like. And when I head back from a shoot, the only thing that's running through my head is that I need to get home and start editing these photos. I won't even edit all of them, maybe just a couple, one or two for my own satisfaction to see if the vision was met. After making my basic exposure adjustments, I head into the color grading window. The only color grading wheel I really care about here is the shadows. I've tried a bunch of variations, but I think the colors that really sell the film look are green and blue. I typically like going in between the two, getting a mix of blue and green, almost like a teal. 
then I play with the luminance a bit. If your photo starts to look more blue, I usually counter it either by adjusting my white balance to make the photo a little bit warmer, or go into my mid-tones wheel and drag the slider into the oranges. After we're done in the color grading tab, we have to add grain because what kind of film photo would it be without some grain? And that's really it. These are the only two adjustments I'll be making to these photos besides my basic corrections. That's actually a lie. We're gonna quickly add a mask around our subject's head or face, invert it so we're affecting everything other than our subject's face, and crank that clarity slider. Okay, not too much, just a little bit. Decrease our exposure a little bit to drive focus to our subject's face. Not too much or it'll start to look fake. And now we're done. I'm going to quickly edit these photos and I'll put the results up on the screen. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, make sure to give this video a like. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.